Hi there, Nathan Patrick Taylor here. One of the questions I get frequently from users and from some of the developers or just people interested in Power BI is what is the difference between a dashboard and a report? So I quickly wanna go through the two different types of items inside Power BI. So let's switch on over to Power BI. When I'm in Power BI and the workspace I've created is empty, in this case, I've just created a workspace called AdventureWorks here and there's nothing in this workspace. There's no reports, there's no data sets there. It's just empty, I get a blank screen. What I wanna do is publish a report to the Power BI service, which will create the report and the backend data set to go with it. So I happen to have a couple reports that I've built based on the AdventureWorks database. So let's go ahead and publish those real quickly. When I do that, I'm gonna choose the AdventureWorks workspace that I've created. All right, the three reports are published, so we'll switch back on over to the Power BI service, get some nice notifications here saying that there's some reports that have been created, so let's just refresh my Power BI webpage here. And uh, I'm in the AdventureWorks workspace. Uh, now, I see there's still no dashboards here. The reports are listed here, the three that I set up. There's nothing under workbooks, and then there's data sets to go with those three reports. Those data sets are connected to a backend SQL Server database. So how does it work with the actual dashboards? Well, to do that, you have to be in a report. And I'm going to start with the internet sales report here. And actually, I'm going to switch it up. Let's go back and do uh, inventory. Inventory is a good one. I tend to think about the way that dashboards work as a very quick sort of one-off glance at what the current state is. So it's a very high level look at the data that's being presented to the user and then gives them the ability to then drill down or open the, the specific report they wanna look at. So let's take a look at it from this inventory uh, report that I've created. And again, it's a sample report, it doesn't have all the bells and whistles that are usually associated with the report. But I do have a selector in here for a date range uh, and then I have some totals and a nice little chart. So let's go ahead and pin uh, some of the units purchased and the inventory cost here. And to do that, not crazy, you hit the pin button. So there's a pin visual there. And um, I'm gonna say I wanna pin it to a new dashboard and we're just gonna call this dashboard uh, AdventureWorks. Uh, and maybe we'll call it AdventureWorks Operations uh, since it's a high level view. All right, so we'll pin that visual to the dashboard and um, I'm gonna go straight to the dashboard from the notification that I got here, okay? And you'll see that the visual that I pinned is on the dashboard. If I were to back out of this and go back to my workspaces again, go to reports and then dashboards here and I'll see my AdventureWorks uh, operations here listed. I got a quick glance of the data. If I were to actually click on that pinned visual, it would then take me to the report where that visual exists. Okay, so some common things that I see that people do, uh, I guess I'll call it strangely or sort of odd or expecting a different behavior, is they'll, is they'll pin the live page. And in doing that, you can pin the live page and I can say uh, to the existing dashboard that I created for AdventureWorks, and when we go look at it, you'll see that page is here. Uh, the visual is interactive, so I can click on it as if it were a, a report. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of doing it this way. It's a little bit confusing to the end user exactly what the dashboard is. And it renders a little bit smaller than the full report renders. I also have a really difficult time using it on an, with something like an iPhone. So um, you can do this. There's nothing wrong with doing it that way, but uh, I tend not to pin the entire page to a dashboard. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and delete that tile. So to get sort of the flavor of what the dashboard is supposed to do, if I go back to all of the reports that I have uh, and take a look at that inventory report, let's go ahead and pin a few more visuals. So we'll do the inventory cost. We'll also go ahead and pin uh, this, pie, this donut chart actually here. 
Uh, and then we're going to go back to AdventureWorks and we'll go to the surveys data and we'll pin the survey that's here and we'll pin the donut chart that's associated with that. And um, for the last piece, we'll go into the internet sales. And um, I really don't have a great, well, I do have one on the summary page. So we'll pin the sales and um, we'll pin the sales by product category as well. Okay, and then we'll go back to the dashboard. So I have all these pins here, and all I'm gonna do is organize them in a way that is a little bit more intuitive to the person who's going to be interacting with the, with the uh, dashboard. So let's move the inventory cost, these three things go together, the surveys completed um, with the, uh, pie, the donut chart that goes with it, and then the sales amount uh, will be the same thing and for some better symmetry I'd like to have another set down here but we'll just deal with it the way that it is so this gives you a little bit more comprehensive overview of the data if you're the CEO the CIO uh, the chief operating officer whoever it is they can they can log in they're in Power BI they get it on their phone they get it on a tablet and they get sort of a one-stop shop overview of what's going on with the organization and again they can just simply click on the pins and then be taken exactly to the report depending on who you are you may not need to drill down to the report if you if you create the right type of visual and pin it to the dashboard it may just give you the information you want and then you can act on it from there for example looking at sales over a certain time period like this month compared to last month and see if you're on track or surveys completed are there surveys that are bad that are good are you getting bad comments bad feedback and can you act on that right now without having to drill all the way down into the data so that's the initial take on dashboards that's part one part two is a little bit different Part two sort of leads you into the devil in the details here. And the, and the devil in the details in this case is uh, these live tiles, uh, what, I'm, what my opinion and my take is on the live piece of it is that they are connected to the selections that are made in the uh, slicer here. So I can't do it with this set, but I'm just going to describe to you what I mean when that happens. These, and the reason I can't do it is because this data is old and it doesn't refresh uh, in real time. But let's say that I wanted to have this data be updated, say, on a bi-hourly basis or even hourly basis. I need to have the filter set so that it is moving forward as time goes on. And these, these slicers don't really work that way. These are set to one specific time period, for example, January 1st to June 30th of 2014, this, this live tile that's pinned to the dashboard here is never gonna change. It's always going to say 2,157. Even as I get new data, it's not gonna update. The way around that, or the intended design, if I go back to, uh, say, internet sales here, is to make this filter a relative filter, or a relative slicer, and then uh, select, if, if I wanted it to be real time, uh, say the last uh, month, you know, which is going to be uh, December 9th of 2017 through January 1st of 2018. Uh, there's no data in this data set for that time period. That's not why it's going to be displayed. But if I were then to pin the live tile onto the dashboard, when it gets refreshed with new data every hour, it's going to look at this relative one month period and it will update the data. That's a common mistake that people make is they pin a live tile and then don't realize that the slicers that are attached to the report need to reflect that time period that's selected when new data comes into the report. Okay, so that's that's my uh, real brief take on the way that dashboards are dashboards are supposed to work. There's some more uh, tips and tricks that we'll add later about how to get the relative dates to work, how to get the slicers to match how the live pins are going to work. But that gives you a real quick introduction to start with.